So we're back and we're going to finish out this example problem using method of joints for this truss. And it, last time when we left off, we had two equations, two unknowns for joint C, which we had isolated from the beginning. And here, when you solve out the two equations, two unknowns, I'm not going to work the algebra out for you. I did that already and hopefully it's correct. But NCD or the force is minus 26 kips which means that this would be 26 kips in compression okay so member cd is in compression and member bcb the internal force and member cb is positive 40 kips indicating tension now that we have these two member forces bc and cd done we can move on to it's another joint okay and so this one joint let's see joint d has still Let's see, it's an unknown member BD, a member DA, uh, and an unknown DY, so that still has three unknowns, but we can go to joint B. So let's go to joint B next, because we know joint B, we know the force in BC, which is 40 kips, and we have two other joints framing, two other members framing into joint B, and that'll leave us with uh, two unknowns and two equations. So let's draw out joint B. So, oops, for joint B, going joint by joint, and here is B, and I've got um, got a force right here. I'll call this N. Let me look at that drawing again. NBC and NBA. This would be oh, I want to draw this in red. NBC, NBA, and then I've got another one i've again i've assumed i've still drawn these in assuming tension and that's what you always want to do when you draw your schematic is a straw in tension okay draw the member forces assuming tension and here nbd which would be something like this right here nbd and oh let me draw that a little bit more accurately it's maybe like this nbd right here and now joint b is actually kind of an interesting one and in particular, if because right now, if if I if I orient my axes when I when I analyze joint B here, if I say this is plus x and this right here is plus y, okay, and um and let's say I take I, I don't know what that angle is. I'm just gonna put a theta there. Okay, it doesn't. I don't. I don't even care what that angle is really. But if I, if I sum the forces in the y direction, sum forces in the y equal to zero, and I say this orientation is positive right here, you know, I would get, because this right here, this x-axis is parallel with, with NNBA and NBC right here, so sum the forces in the y, I would get that uh, negative NBD cosine of theta equals zero. And this is some constant. So who cares about that? And that tells me that NBD equals zero. And this right here, NBD, is what's called a zero force member. Now, do I, you know, in the next, in probably another video uh, later on, I'll show you how to identify uh, zero force members. We probably could have identified this right from the start. Okay, and that would have made our analysis a little bit easier. But we didn't. We just want to go through the process. So if I do some of the forces in the x now, that's simply going to tell me here that this is positive right here. It's just going to tell me that NBC equals NBA. Okay. And and so here that's going to be that means all of this is also plus 40 kips. So NBA is also plus 40 kips. Uh, then I will have and I know NBD is zero. So if I go back up here and let me do this in red right here. You know, I know that this is plus 40 kips, plus 40 kips. This is zero. This was minus 26 kips in member CD. So now I could actually isolate joint D, solve for two equations, two unknowns. And I can then after I do that, I can go to joint A and solve for the two reactions, AX and AY. So here, I'll just draw this out. I'm not going to solve it. I'll just draw this. I'll draw this isolation for joint D out for you. And then I'll give you the answers or the numerical answers for the rest. And I guess you're getting some YouTube homework. Ha ha ha. Right. But here, joint D, I've got 
bam, a, a D, Y. I've got a zero force member. I'm not even going to draw that. I've got uh, um, this member D, C, N, D, C, N, D, C, and here. NDA and notice I even though I know or I calculated previously that NDC was in compression and negative I didn't try to draw the arrow the other way I just kept drawing the arrow in in tension okay drawing the arrow indicating tension in member DC just so that I can be consistent I just have to take that negative number and, and plug it into the equilibrium equation that I would have which would be let's see that equilibrium equation real fast let's say this was a what was this it's a 5 12 13 triangle. So uh, some of the forces in the X equal to zero. Let's say this way is positive. I would get NDC times 5 thirteenths um, minus NDA equals zero. And then I would say that NDC is, is negative 26. So when I plug in the numbers, I just have to plug in negative 26 kips. I don't have to worry about flipping the sign or anything because I drew it consistently. 5 thirteenths, and that's going to be NDA. Okay, and that tells me that NDA is negative 10 kips. Yay! NDA is equal to minus 10 kips, indicating that this last bar right here is in compression. This last member right here is minus 10 kips. And then I can go to joint A and, and, uh, um, and calculate A while AX and AY. All right, I hope that was uh, useful and finished out our method of joints, and you enjoyed it a little bit. I'll see you probably in the next video for a method of sections and zero force members in the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.